couple of days ago, I was just driving along the road and I noticed that the Speedo, all the Binnacle instruments just simply weren't working on my Ford Galaxy. Of course now I've come to disassemble it, I find that um, it works. Although I do believe when my wife used it the other night, the Speedo was sticking and then intermittent. And from reading on the forums, I understand that this is due possibly due to uh, dry joints, maybe through the use of lead-free solder on the printed circuit board. And so I was going to attempt to get this out I spoke to a friend at a local garage and he's told me that the way into the uh, the binnacle uh, was to remove these covers and there's some screws under here. Um, that was over the phone of course so yeah, maybe his memory's not quite as good, I don't know, but uh, I have found some screw holes down here and uh, there's another one under there. So I'm going to take this off and that cover and see what's revealed down here. Well, well there's the screw holes, one here and one here and the other one is there. That one down the bottom is a T25 Torx head, or I suppose the T stands for Torx. Uh, these ones up here on the corners, they are um, a very small crosshead. Well, that's the screws out. As I say, that one's a, a Torx head. The other two, you can see that. They're small, long, thin crossheads. With it undone, just a matter of jiggle it, jiggle it Granville. Oh actually it'd probably help if I release the, uh, the steering wheel. Yeah. There we go. Ooh, it's, got, it's got a little bit of material attached to it here. Um, let's see. in there. Uh, there's some clips in here that you can't see because the sun's just come out and if I just I can't see because the sun's come out. Yeah, I've just slipped the clips out of here. There's virtually no force required to uh, get them loose and uh, there's the clips there uh, to reveal this piece of material I'm rather hoping that I can see under here well not yet is the answer to that one. Hmm, a mystery. I couldn't work out how to get this off. And I realised that, that in here I could see that there's a screw through that's behind the steering wheel uh, boss. So to try to work out how to get this off, well, a bit of googling around, a bit on YouTube. There are some clips inside here that hold this this portion on they're in sort of behind here uh, and you have to turn the wheel so I'm just going to do that now there are a couple of recesses in behind here that you have to put a flat bladed screwdriver into and lever to release the clips I found it easier if I uh, release the steering wheel I pulled it up um, and with the screwdriver over the top of the uh, binnacle sort of shelf part, 
and it, you, it, you don't have to actually move it very much. Um, you'll see in a moment, if I get it off again, so you put the, the flat of the screwdriver in parallel to the ground and you can just feel something release and uh, that's worked a treat. Now um, release the steering lock again. Turn it all the way round and then put the wheel back in position again on that side. Uh, hole on the other side again. Flat blade of the screwdriver in parallel to the ground. And you have to sort of push up against a metal object and then just gently move down. And what happens is it just pops open and becomes loose. And there is a wire in there, so don't rip it off. There's a connector down there which you have to disassemble. Um, but you can see the clips with the springs on. I haven't got three hands, so I can't point to it. Um, and what you're trying to do is release, just balance this. When you put the screwdriver in, what you're doing is you're, find the hole. I think the steering column's moved. Um, ah, I don't know. Ah, there we go. That's what you're, you're pressing against. That's not made clear in the other videos. I thought, I thought you're bending this back, but you're not. <clears throat> so when you put the screwdriver through the hole, you're releasing the spring. It's not a huge amount of effort required. Um, so it's reasonably easy to do. Uh, I'm hoping that now I can Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I may now have problems with this because it describes uh, you requiring a special tool, which of course I don't have. Now, as I don't actually want to take the steering wheel off, I am rather hoping that the access holes that I use to take the airbag, etc., out. Um, let me just see. blocking the light probably but um, there is a hole through there and it might be that if I take this retaining plate off which has got three two and a half Torx heads or two, uh, 25 half Torx heads on um, then the, the hole in there will then line up with the hole required to take this lower cover off well we'll have to see right let's whip these off then one and take this plate off oh, yeah. lots of scratching marks and let's have a look oh, there's the holes that you get access to release the springs on the um, steering wheel. I'm just thinking about the torch. And hold this. There we go. There's the little crosshead screw. Well, you possibly can't see it but um, through that hole there you can see the small crossheads. The same looks like the same sort of crosshead that there was. Uh, holding the upper casing on. So that's what I'm going to do now, just uh, take those screws out and hopefully the bottom casing will drop off. Yes, this is now loose. 
the other side of course is being constrained by the, uh, the steering lock um, mechanism, steering ignition key mechanism. Uh, so I'll um, probably have to fiddle with that. What I just found was uh, on this side that although I'd undone the screw, it, I couldn't get it out far enough um, to to release the cover, the bottom cover. Um, and I, I think probably if you attached a magnet to your screwdriver, you could and, and released all the tension off the screw, you'd be able to slide it out further. Actually, what I did was cheated a little bit, and uh, I pulled down on this side, uh, putting the sort of creating another thread for the screw to grip against. So when you unscrewed it, it was it's coming out. If you follow me, I sort of jammed the screw sideways, so I was able to still continue to screw it out but that was only because I was too lazy to go and get a magnet to put on the screwdriver to draw the screw out but uh, it seems to have got loose now and having loosened both sides I'm now able to to wiggle it free I think or oh, maybe not on it. Oh, there we go. It's off. Ugh. Nobody's done any dusting in here for a while. So, quite a bit of work just to replace that. And then I believe the screws I want to get the, the binnacle out are under here somewhere and it should just clip out. So now upside down in the footwell, I can't really illuminate you might just be able to see the uh well there's the screwdriver and it's going through to there's a pair of screws under there unfortunately even with my little quarter inch extension on uh, the head of the screwdriver is too close to the ignition switch on both sides because there's one on either side of the um of the column down inside there and uh, this is from upside down in the footwell of course and um, I, I can't get any purchase on the end of the screwdriver so I'm gonna have to switch over to a, a socket I think and a, a ratchet rather to, to a ratchet and see if I can get more extensions on there to reach further out. I've got something a bit longer now with the every three-eighths or quarter inch drive attachment I've got on there and uh, just about get in there with just the extra it wasn't much I mean you, you might have been able to do it if you had stronger fingers than me but um, anyway I've, I've managed to I can't really show it it's just too tight in there but um, yeah I've, I've managed to crack that one and uh, it seems loose after that so i just go ahead and crack the other one take those screws out and and i believe you can just unclip the binnacle and it will pull forward well that's uh, got those screws undone they appear to be captive at the moment um so something to bear in mind two things one is that the seat belt stalks on these don't bend so if you lean on one in your middle of your back it hurts and the other thing is, anything you drop whilst upside down in the footwell smacks you in the face. Um, right, okay, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, see if I can get this binnacle out. It really doesn't appear to be any looser, but we'll see. Well, I was struggling to work out how to get this dash out. Uh, they talk about pulling it forward, but I couldn't work out what to get hold of. Um, and then, uh, looking online... I saw somebody pulling another dash out with a uh, what he called um, um, a trim tool but what I found was if you can push a screwdriver in right up the top in there and work it along the edges just lowering it down, not, not doing a lot, you've got to be careful not, if you don't want to twist it, 
because you'll end up damaging the plastic. It's it's reasonably robust, but it's not fantastic there. <laughs> it's not fantastic plastic. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and um, anyway, just levering it down ever so slightly, but still there was nothing to grab hold of. So when I saw this guy with the um, uh, trimming tool, I got myself a piece of aluminium, made it fit, and in fact, if you jam it in, well, this is a bit long actually, it needs to be a little bit shorter than this so you can get it in to this space. Um, but what I found was actually, if you do push it in there, you can get behind it and you just pull it forward. There's a little clip sound, but um, yeah, it's, it's really quite straightforward, really quite simple once you've worked out and you've, it probably doesn't even need to be such a big lip as this. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I got it forward. So once you've got it lowered down a little bit, you can in fact just get something in there and it just sort of pops downwards. It was um, really quite, quite simple in the end. And uh, it tips forward. So these are the three clips. As you can see, they've got a bit of felt over them, which presumably makes them slide in and out easily. Well, I've had a go at releasing these clips and I've sort of got them partially off, but I think they might be being held in by these, um, there's a connector here and another one on the other side. And it appears to get these connectors out. You have to just lift the little pink locking bar um, over the top of the blue bit and then it acts like an ejector and that comes out and I'm assuming the same will apply over the other side as well. Well I didn't have to worry about taking these clips off in situ because once you've got those connectors out of the blue and green sockets you can just withdraw the unit and uh, well I should go indoors now and uh, see about taking this cover off. Well it appears these are T10. Is that right? Yeah T10. Uh, I've got this set of bits there. It's a silver line set. It's not the toughest tools in the world, these particular things. But as long as all you want to do is crack open something like this, I don't think they're a problem. suspect you could, like I have done before, jam an Allen bolt, uh, Allen, Allen key in there. Right. Now, hopefully, when I start prizing bits off, I'll actually come off and stay off. There we go, look how easy that was. Right. So the reason it wouldn't come off easily is because I was doing it wrong. get to the other side of it. Come on, let's have another look. Oh no, uh, it slid off. Oh, I thought that was attached. Yes, right. Oh my goodness. Yeah, right, okay, the impression I got 
from things that have been said was that there was just a few components to run solder over. This is way more complicated. There is, however, whether you can see, yes you can, see that staining there? as though it's got wet. Um, yeah, I think you can see this. Just, just the focus of it. Mm, may not be significant at all, but there's definitely something has been spilt. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I can find is obvious is it's way more complicated than here than I thought it was going to be. Um, and that's the only obvious thing. Perhaps uh, a bit of alcohol and uh, pot and buds might be able to remove that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, well I'll clean that anyway. I'm certainly not going to run solder over this lot. That would be absurd. And um, I'll get a magnifying glass out and just check to see if there's anything obvious. But other than that, I think it'll be reassemble it again in the morning. Some sort of voltage, probably a voltage regulator, a five-legged device here in this heat sink. Be worth me concentrating my attentions around this area. Um, check to see whether that capacitor has leaked or not. Well, that and the capacitor have got nothing to do with each other. Um, this is possibly a regulator. And, um, you know, if it's a common fault that all four dials had completely failed, then uh, uh, maybe maybe that's a good place to look. I looked over everything uh, very closely with the magnifying glass. I couldn't see anything wrong. I cleaned off that mess that was on there, but I, I couldn't see anything. So I've just reassembled it and uh, put it back into the car. It just pushes in at the top, up here. So you locate the bottom and then just rotate it backwards, obviously having plugged the connectors in at the back. Um, and then just push it in, it just clips in ever so soft because of the felt things. The only thing is, you've got to take it out again because I've managed to accidentally knock one of the dials round. So that's something to be wary of. OK, what I'd failed to spot when I put it back together the first time is there's a little indentation in the disc up here and underneath there's a little peg and if you take this round, slot that behind here, the indentation, the cutout, just drops onto that peg and then you won't have to take it out again like I've just done. When you come to put the connector back in, make sure that the ejector, it's obvious really, but make sure the ejector is in the fully forward position. Slot it in, a bit tricky one-handed. Okay, and as you push it in the ejector starts to slide backwards anyway. And then when it reaches a point where it won't go any further, just push the ejector backwards and you will see it push the connector down and then just make sure it's well and truly seated. Locate the binnacle in the bottom and then just push it back. And it will just 
clip into place. Those little felt pads over the top of the clips obviously make it fit really nicely. Now I was tempted to to try it just to see whether the dials had come on. Um, the, the odometer has, has lit up but I was tempted to try it but I think I saw something somewhere that said don't switch the ignition on with the airbag disconnected uh, because you will get an airbag uh, fault come up. Now I don't know whether that was what it said I, I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention at that point because I was just struggling to work out how on earth you got the cover off in the first place um, perhaps I should have paid more attention um, but uh, I'm not going to try it just in case that is the situation although if you've got a friendly local garage it's quite possible that they will um, they will just reset that for you anyway. When you come to put the lower cover back on make sure the screws are in although those are sticking out a little bit far and probably get caught but the other thing I noticed is in here there's it's obviously got to go around the lever that locks the steering wheel but then just to the side of that you see those little comb shaped things I think that goes in this get it there because on the other side in that side obviously the securing lever goes through there but on the other side there are two there and I think again they go on the inside this this plate that they're attached to is actually quite loose and at first I couldn't work out whether it went on the inside or the outside of the cover but I, I think it goes on the inside and uh, those pegs they don't clip into anything they just seem to sit inside it hopefully it's not all going to rattle when it gets back together again um, the little screws that hold the bottom cover in place I suppose you could put a bit of something around them to stop them from dropping through the cover every time you try to align it but otherwise they catch and you can't put the cover on so I'm having to hold the steering wheel in just the right spot uh, to get the uh, screw into the hole. Um, I have released the uh, steering lock obviously to move the steering wheel but I've moved it ever so slightly just enough without actually switching on the ignition. Okay so I've, I've done up the two screws uh, holding the bottom cover on. Um, just a note, um, I'm sure lots of people will be aware of it already. I did one up mostly, but not fully tight, before I pulled it round and then put the other one in. Tightened that up fully and then went back to the first one again. Uh, it's been my experience, if you're putting covers on, if you tighten one up fully, because you've just got the screwdriver in it, it's there, the hole's in place, blah blah blah. You do all of that and then you find you can't align the second one and you have to go back to the first one anyway. So that's why... Do one up mostly, then put the second one in, tighten it up, and then go back to the first one. All right, I'll share this moment with you. All right, well, the fuel gauge has come on. Oops, I'll move the seat, I can't reach the pedals. Out of gear. Tacos on. Computer's um, reset to zero, has it? Yeah, that's all reset to zero. Mm, very well, no problem there really. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I could run it for five minutes and see whether the uh, um, temperature gauge comes up, but 
if the taco's working the fuel gauge is on to be perfectly honest at the moment before I changed it it was actually working uh, so um, I'll just have to drive it down the road and see whether it works there you go out a treat right yeah I'll just have to give it a try well, I've taken it for a spin and everything seems to work. And the real bonus, uh, I fixed the cruise control fault as well. That had been going on for some time and it just wouldn't set. Um, on the Mark I I had, the problem was a broken wire on the indicator stalk at the point where it was supposed to flex. It was just a matter of uh, getting it apart, getting the old wire out, pulling in the new one at the same time and um, soldering and sleeving it from what I can remember but um, so that was fine uh, in this particular case there's a ribbon cable that runs out of the stalk underneath the indicator switch module and appears to plug into a connector right up next to the column um, I really all I did was wiggle stuff around and um, uh, on the connector that is and um, sort of press the connector and so on uh, but funnily enough I just thought oh I'll give it a try and uh, yeah I've I've solved that problem as well now time to go and watch the rugby I did this disassembly and reassembly back in February it's now August the car's been used a lot and uh, the issues have not come back either that with the binnacle or the cruise control, both have been working fine ever since.